Hey there, it's Frank with Think Milk. Today we're going to talk about using Wikipedia. So Wikipedia is a great source of data. Sometimes you want to write software where you can just get the data from Wikipedia. Sometimes you might just want the first sentence or the first paragraph. Today we're going to build an API with Wikipedia. Okay, so in Wikipedia, there's a few things to keep in mind. We want to extract the text. So in here, we're going to look at this code. So we're not going to actually write the code out. It's one file. I created one file that goes through. And what this does is just gets the pure text in there. There's no tables. There's no headers. All the things that you could get, this just gets the pure text. But, but one of the biggest reasons I've, I, I come to love this is because when I'm trying to do machine learning, and I know I go back to this a lot, machine learning is very useful. Uh, this data is really useful. I can go hit the Wikipedia page real quick, get back, clean up, cleanse it, and then use it in real time. So in this here, you can take a look and you can see here, well, go over each section. So we, uh, we're going to break it up in sections. There's two main public methods. This one public method is, I'm going to show you here, this is the method to get the first paragraph. It's probably the most important method because you're getting the first paragraph of the entire Wikipedia, Wikipedia page. So for example, if I look up uh, a name of a person like Michael Jackson or, you know, whatever, or I look up the word, and I guess sadly enough, in this case, coronavirus, it will give me the specific text about that in the first paragraph, the, the synopsis, the, the idea. And if you want to go further, you can extract out the first sentence using regular expression. So here is this next function gives me all the paragraphs. So in the list, all the paragraphs that I can use. The next function is a private function that says, just make the attempt to get data from Wikipedia. So what it does is, first it takes all the string text and make it lowercase, and then what it does is tries to attempt to hit it. If nothing comes back or it's empty, which typically is going to be null, what it does next is tries to uppercase the first letters of each word, then it goes through an extraction process, and if nothing happens again, it returns empty string. Otherwise, it would return back the data from Wikipedia. So the next function is the beef and potatoes of the entire process. This is the Wikipedia extraction. So we in here I have name. Um, I mean we don't really need the name part. I can change it to whatever you want. Text, string, whatever. I call it name because initially I was starting this to, you know, use it for people, but then I realized that it can actually be used for anything. I kind of just left the word name in there. I can change it whatever I want. But anyway, so what it does is it first goes in it and we'll talk about this in a moment as well. So I can go in this whole portion next. Then afterwards, the next function that I use is a scrubbing function. So it, it scrubs the data. So after we do all the picking and pulling out and extraction, then we have to we say we need to scrub this data uh, because you know it's pretty much dirty and it has a lot of stuff in there because it's HTML. We're not we are not getting the data from you know an API. We're getting the data straight from a CRUD process. So what we're gonna do is is is, is scrub this data out. And after that, I just, I just have simple functions, simple helper functions in here that will split the words and you know split the paragraphs, so that helps you know create a better collection of text from out of the data that we get from Wikipedia. So, what makes this different than some other ones? For example, like I said, I can get back all the paragraphs, and I can get back the first paragraph, which is just kind of going through and getting the, all the paragraphs to take the first one. What I do next is now the most beef and potatoes, the beef and potatoes, the beef and potatoes of extracting out from Wikipedia. So remember I mentioned before, take that name in, that string in, and we'll convert it into um, to using underscores. So what it does is it emulates the DOM on the browser, So, but it's in PHP. Afterwards, we create an XPath on that DOM, which means the same way you can look into the browser and see an XPath in there. There's different variations. Most of the data sits in, in Wikipedia, it sits within this class, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this and remove everything else. Now it's refined. Then I say, okay, start another DOM, which I know might be a bit expensive, but, you know, hear me out. I go through, sanitize that again, and now I have an XPath of this, this nested 
to the data. So what I do next is say here's these not allowed uh, tags. I clear I, I put them all in this list. So this is pretty much I what I found within Wikipedia after doing a bunch of testing. And then what I'm saying is also you can go through all this other metadata here and just remove it. But if you want to keep it like table of contents, I don't know why you would want that, but somebody might have a reason for this person. Give me the highlights of this person. Here's a table of contents. You can use that. So what I do in any way is I say go not allow classes. But really all it does is it just writes it out. So you say, okay, what does that mean? I have a test here. I require this file. I was going to take in an argument in my test, but instead I decided to actually just use a value in here, like this word YouTube, for example, and you can return back the text by getting the first paragraph. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up PowerShell from here. For some reason, the PowerShell on that one's a bit small, so I can actually open up PowerShell from here, close that one out, and type this one in, so PHP test. Run it. There you go. So YouTube is American online sharing platform headquartered in San Bruno, California. It does have still have some um, non ASCII characters in here that we want to go ahead and get rid of. So I might add these into our list right here. So and returns back an empty string, so we don't get those things in here because uh, they're still part of the HTML process that's still showing up on here. So if I was to change a word, for example, um, to Joiner Lucas, because he came out lately with his new song, Will. And I come up here and run it again. You can see, all right, so Gary Maurice Lucas Jr., known professionally as Joiner Lucas, is an American rapper, singer, songwriter, record producer, and all that good stuff. You may see some of this up here, this found error stuff. Um, I'm going to look into why that's showing up on here for some reason. Oh. I know why. Because initially it didn't know what it was, his name. So it made it pop top. It made the top part. So, for example, you see how it's here, Joiner Lucas. It couldn't find that text because his name could not have lowercase. If I made this uppercase, for example, right? If I changed this to uppercase, Joiner Lucas, this is the issue I have with that. It attempted the first time, it didn't find it, and it did it the second time. So, I did it again. Oh, because I convert it into lowercase. So here, in this case, I always convert the code into lowercase. Um, where? Right here. So I convert to lowercase first before it goes into that. So let's see. Go back here. And I change the name to Michael Jackson. All right. Run that on Michael Jackson. And there it is. So, Michael Jackson had an issue because his name was okay. Michael Joseph Jackson was an American songwriter, you know, dancer, does his king of pop. He has all these different things in here. I can say, because of the situation with coronavirus, I can put that in there. Uh, that in there as well. And there it is. So, you can see here coronavirus, and coronavirus are. A group of related viruses that cause diseases in mammals and birds. And humans, coronavirus causes respiratory tract infections that could cause range from mild to lethal. So what that does is you can really put in here in context of what Wikipedia can do. So and it's, it's relatively fast, but I think most of it is just because I'm trying to get the data out of it. So if I change this here to use um, get paragraphs, for example, right? So I come here and I switch this out and I say get paragraphs, right? I'm going to do this again and it's going to get me a list of paragraphs. You can see all these paragraphs here from this coronavirus. And it has, I mean, here 50, well, these last two are not right. They're not in good text. But the 50 on here, 51 entries you can see here, here's all the text on that. For example, I switched it up and said something like, Hey, you know what? I want zero, one, two, and three. I want those particular paragraphs. Um, let's see. Oh, I need a big comment here. All right, there you go. And run it. Oh, let me clear first. Hold on. Let's clear this out. All right. Now I'll run it again. 
Oops. And again, and now I'm going to run this again. And now I get the actual number of paragraphs. He talked about three paragraphs, or four paragraphs actually. Zero, one, two, and three. And I can see here, you know, what coronavirus is, and then the most relevant things after that. So it's really, really useful. And then what happens is in the future, we might modify this to say Wikipedia API you know, underscore tables or whatever you want to do so that we can really get a more use of all the data. So with that said, I want to say thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.